Alright, so we're going to take a look at antibodies, and specifically, we want to know when antibodies start being produced by a baby, and exactly how long the mother's antibodies the half -life stay in equation. the child, and we then have what to that determine might mean. which reaction order we're so, dealing with. So, is it a, a zeroth order, first order, or second order? And now, for our purposes, we're going to assume that it's all first order, and that assumption isn't going to be exactly correct because the half-life inside of the body, inside of a biochemical environment, is not going to be uh, exactly the same as the half-life in a perfect test tube reaction. And the reason behind that is there's multiple mechanisms for eliminating different products. For example, you have enzyme breakdown, you have deposition within the tissues, you have excretion, you have urination filtration. And so there are many different types of reactions and not all of them are going to be first order. But for the most part, we can assume first order as long as enzymes don't become saturated and so forth. So, first order, um, that's where we're going to start with. And so with first order, we're going to use the integrated rate law. And so A equals, so the, the concentration of antibodies at some time is equal to the original amount of those antibodies times E to the, the rate constant times the time that we're talking about. So A at some time what's its concentration. We're going to go ahead and divide this A over to this side to isolate this term. We want to get rid of the E. E's are hard to work with. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides and, uh, and by doing that um, what we get is we, we're going to look at this log rule. So the net, first a reminder that the natural log of any number is the same thing as saying log base E of that number. What does that mean? Well log base e of e to the x or log base anything times that same thing to the x is going to equal x. So here I have log base e to the x. And that means I can cancel it out. So that cancels out and here that's going to cancel out as well. So we've gotten rid of e. Now so the natural log of a over uh, a naught is equal to negative kt where k is my rate law or my rate constant. Okay, so if T is equal to the half-life, then A, the concentration at that time, must be exactly one half of my original concentration. Let me say that again so you get it. The, the definition of a half-life is that at, a, at that time, I have exactly half of my original concentration. So whenever T is equal to, whenever the time I'm looking at is equal to the half-life, the concentration I have will be half of the original. So I'm going to replace, I'm going to set t equal to the half-life and that means that I also have, uh, have to set a equal to 0 0.5 of a naught. What do I get there? I have a lined up with itself so I can cancel it out. And that's going to give me the natural log of one half is equal to negative k times the half-life. Okay. So whenever I have, uh, so first as a reminder, the, the natural log of one half is approximately equal to 0 0.693. So I can use these two things interchangeably, and I will. So the half-life of the first order rate law, remember if we just go ahead and solve by, by dividing k over to this side, we get 0 0.693 over k is equal to the half-life. We know the half-life of the mother's antibodies in a child from measurements. The half-life is about three weeks. So we could go ahead and solve for k if we wanted to and, and figure out what the rate constant is. Not really my thing to do. So um, three weeks is what the half-life is. Of course you could solve for k um, by setting all of this in here. Uh, making it equal to three weeks, so uh, the rate constant 0.23 uh, weeks to the negative one. Or you could just use k in the original rate law. I think this is still a little bit too complicated or a little bit too complex, so let's simplify the equation a little bit more. So if I have k is equal to this, and I have my original rate law, so I can replace, I can substitute where where k is over here, I can substitute it with what k is equal to. So I'll go ahead and do that. Remember that 0 0.693 is the same thing as the natural log of 1 half. So I'll use those interchangeably. 
So here we go. I replaced k in this equation, and this is what I get. The natural log of 1 half, or 0 0.693, over t of 1 half times t. And of course, the negative here cancels this negative out. So the negative times the negative is a positive. Let's take a closer look at this term exactly. First of all, I want to remind you from rules of exponents that when I have z brought to a specific power and that whole thing brought to another power, that's the same thing as them being multiplied. And so the, it, it goes both ways. So if I have z brought to a specific power and that whole thing brought to another power, that's exactly what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and, and analyze this term. And that term is the same thing as saying z or e brought to this power brought to another power. So here's e or z, there's m, there's n, and then of course there they all are again. Whenever e is uh, taken to the natural log, when the natural log is the exponent of e, it cancels itself out. And so now this is the term I'm left with. All of this, so I'm, I'm just analyzing this, so this is equal to this, so I can plug this in right here. And that's the equation I'm left with. This is a good equation. This is going to be one of our final equations, but we want to analyze it a little bit more, because what this equation will tell me is how much I have left. I have to pick what time, and then by picking what time I want to analyze it, I can figure out what's left. But I want to also be able to pick how much is left and figure out at what time that might happen. So let's go ahead and um, divide a naught over to the other side, which I did, and then I just rearranged these. I rearranged it so that you could see uh, very clearly a mathematical rule. So remember the rule that a, a to the x is equal to y. If a to the x is equal to y, then the log base a of y is equal to x. So if I say that a is 1 half, a to the x, so there's the x, is equal to y, here's y. So y is equal to a over a naught, x is equal to t over the half-life, a is equal to 1 half. Then I can rearrange that into this format, and I'll get the log of 1 half, log base 1 half, to, uh, to the a over a naught is equal to the the time over the half-life. So now I can solve for time. So I can ask myself with this question, if I, at what time will I have a given concentration? So I want to know when the concentration will be 5%. So I plug in 5% here, I plug in 100% here, I plug in my half-life here, and I can figure out what time that is. So here are the three equations. This is our original rate law. You can use that, of course, if you want to. Uh, 0 0.23, I think, was uh, the rate constant for this. And then here is the uh, equation solved for time, and here's the equation solved for concentration. So how long until only 10% is left? That, this equation will answer that. How long until only 10% is left? Well, I plug in 10% for my... Uh, my ending concentration, 100% for my starting concentration, and three weeks is the half-life. The half-life, again, has to be measured. It cannot be calculated from any other precursor. You have to measure your rates and then use that information to solve your rate laws and everything else. So it's going to be approximately 10 weeks whenever I have only 10% left. That's just a little over, uh, it's, a, it's just under two and a half months, just barely under two and a half months. So at, at two and a half months, the baby will have 10% of his mother's immunoglobulin left. So how much is left after, or how, yeah, how much is left after four months? And then, so those of you who, um, who don't know what, how to do math, four months is 17 weeks. I'm so flustered at the thought of people not knowing how to do math. So four months is 17 weeks, how much uh, immunoglobulin will be left after four months? Now, why do I say four months? Uh, you're going to see here in a minute. So I'm going to take 17 weeks is going to be the time that I'm analyzing. My half-life is three weeks. My original concentration is 100%. The answer to that is about 2%. After four months, 
about 2% of the antibodies that your mom that mom gives to baby through the placenta are are left. So, why did I say 4 months? Well, antibody, antibody production for a baby begins at approximately 4 months of age. They can start making having fully developed T cells and B cells and at that time they can start making the antibodies to fight their own infections so they don't need mom's immunoglobulins anymore. At least they don't need mom's IgG. The IgA that they get from the breast milk is still good and healthy and it'll protect them for much, much longer than the four months. But at four months, the IgG that they got from the placenta is almost gone. So what does this mean about the baby's risk for infection? I'm hypothesizing, now this is a hypothesis, I'm not sure if it's ever been tested or demonstrated or, or analyzed, but I'm hypothesizing that right prior, just prior to four months and probably up to about four months and two weeks, the baby is at the highest risk of infection. Now I'm saying that because it usually takes, after an antigen is presented in the body, it usually takes about a week to a week and a half before the body ramps up its production of everything and starts fighting that infection full force using the uh, lymphocytes. Now the the innate immune system, meaning the neutrophils, the mast cells, everything else, those uh, um, those can still work. Those will be working just pro fine and properly. However, the the adaptive immune system takes about a week or week and a half, sometimes up to two weeks to really kick in high gear. So that's why I'm saying that. And in, I'm done.